we looked at in the last class Jerusalem Council and and how it was I said it was a very important council in the church the the reason why you and I worship the way that we worship the Lord it is simply because of Jerusalem Council it just sold an issue it was so huge that Gentiles doesn't have to follow Jewish customs, Jewish practices in order to be a follower of Christ. Doesn't have to. It is solved. And James says there are certain things you need to avoid, like eating certain food and things, too, so that you would not offend. Jewish brother, right? Jewish people. That's what he was, that's what he said. So we looked at that one. All right, today we need to look at disagreement, right? Disagreement uh, uh, on two missionary teams. Let's look at Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, we are going to look at verse 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. We are going to read that one, all right? One of you, please read. Who is going to read? Not going to name one of you can read. Acts chapter 15, 36, on verse 36 to we have 40. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit believers in all the towns where we preach the word of Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with him to them, but Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers of to the grace of the Lord. Fine. All right. Here is the disagreement. Uh, in, and one missionary team like Paul and Barnabas, that becomes two missionary teams. Right? That is what happened. So what is the victory for Gentile evangelization? at the Jerusalem Council would be a great impetus for the further evangelism. Now, the church of Jerusalem, apostles like Peter and others, all confirmed that Gentiles are not to uh, be given a, a yoke that our fathers were not able to bear. So let them pray, let them, because salvation is by grace, not by works. So they emphasized everything. So, now it is a new embarrassment for the ministry. Paul knew Judaizers were causing trouble in Galatian churches and would naturally be eager to tell them of the decision that reached in, in or at Jerusalem church. Right? With the apostles and all the leaders of church and all the men gathered together, finally take, took a decision. Now, this is what we are going to do. But verse 39 says, there was a sharp disagreement. Luke does not indicate who was to blame for this. Luke doesn't blame Barnabas. Luke doesn't blame Paul. Certainly, Barnabas cannot be all wrong since he goes to Cyprus, which needed to hear the decision of the Jerusalem Council. Yeah, he's going to Cyprus. Paul seems to have been later reconciled to Barnabas, we know. Yes, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and later he also reconciled to Mark. So there was a friction between Paul and Barnabas, Paul and John Mark, right? So we know a later verse to suggest that. Then we also saw Paul took Silas. Who was Silas? Silas was the leader in Jerusalem church and was explicitly identified in Jerusalem letter as one who would speak with authority on the attitude of the Jerusalem church. Yes, Silas was appointed by the Jerusalem church. He was a leader. He's bringing the letter. 
right, you know, a letter that is written. He was also a Roman citizen. And thus, along with Paul, could use those privileges to further the gospel where needed. Silas was also a prophet in 15, who appears to have been fluent in Greek. So Silas, a prophet, right? He's now going with Paul, right? So uh, if you look at, uh, here is a you know, map of given where you can look at the missionary journey. All right, now as we go into chapter 16, we know that Paul adds uh, another person, right? Very important person. What is his name? Timothy. Look at verse 1. He came to Derby, then Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived. Right? So it is, it is in Galatia. Yes. Timothy was apparently a previous convert of Paul. He used the word, my son, in uh, 1 Corinthians, right? Yes. And, and here you have the background. His mother name, mother's name was Eunice. And grandmother was Lois. They were Jewish. Right? So they were Jewish and had taught him scriptures. Yes. So Timothy have a Jewish background. Right? Jewish background. Now, what is you read in verse 3? Paul wanted to take him to, uh, uh, along the, on the journey. So he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area. So what is the story? Paul circumcising Timothy. This would appear to be an inconsistency on Paul's part in light of the recent decision at Jerusalem Council, right? And the letter to Galatians. Because why, what is the need for Timothy to be circumcised? However, we must remember that what was while Paul stoutly resisted any imposition of circumcision and Jewish law upon Gentile converts, he himself continued to live as an observant Jew and urged his converts to express their Christian faith through cultural forms they had inherited. Paul still observed Jewish customs. That culture, he did, he did not change his Jewish culture. Right? He did not change. Of course, Timothy, uh, you know, so as we read that Timothy had a Jewish mother, maybe father was non-Jewish, but Timothy's mother was Jewish. He was Jew in the eyes of the Jewish world. So people looked at him as a Jew. Paul had Timothy circumcised in order to make him acceptable to the synagogue audiences, not to propagate Judaizing Christians, but unbelieving Jewish people need to accept him. Because Jews were very narrow-minded. They don't accept any non-Jewish. This had nothing to do with Timothy's salvation, but for the effectiveness of for the salvation. So Paul is circumcising, right? And Paul was an observant Jewish ordinance observant. He ob ob obeyed, he observed the law, not for the salvation, but he never changed, came out and he said, you know, I'm I believe in I believe in Jesus. No, so no, I don't want to be Jew anymore. No. Jew can be Jew. Whatever may be your identity, you can still be in that identity. And be a follower of Christ. Only thing, if your culture promotes something that are against the gospel, that you may not be able to, you should not follow that. But the rest of all the things, you know, you are, you are coming from a certain country, certain culture, certain way of dress, certain way of eating. There's no, nothing, nothing to change to become a follower of Jesus in that way. 
culture. We are all have an identity. You are from a, a different background. It's not an issue. What or maybe your identity still you can be a follower of Christ. That is what Paul was telling. Right? So chapter 16, verse 5, we have the summary statement. What is the summary statement? Is this. So, churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. 